Yeah, I'm Sansa. I do a little bit of everything. Music streams, playing guitar, playing organ, playing video games a lot, and having conversations where we make sure that we are trying to speak in the most realistic terms possible. So, like, very fact-based, very evidence-based, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Nice. Okay, guys, I apologize. This is very cringy. My sound was screwed up. It's fixed, I think, now. And we also have here with us a very uh, one of my favorite people, the Turk. And uh, go ahead and introduce yourself, sir. Yeah, so I'm Turk. I stream science and tech, do computers and PC and hardware and that kind of stuff uh, here on Twitch as well as on YouTube, youtube.com slash the Turk. I uh, just posted a video about an air cooler today, so uh, <laughs> it's doing okay. I wish it would do better. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm a conservative, and I lean right on pretty much all uh, aspects. But, I like Sanzel, I definitely like uh, talking facts and figures and trying to keep emotions out in order to make the best uh policy decisions as possible uh yeah, so i think that like you can definitely say like it's going to be very hard to find an unbiased jury but um i, I don't think that it's necessarily just going to be biased against the police officer because it seems like people fall into one of two camps they either fall very very hard on the side of the police or very very hard on the side of uh like blm or george floyd or um that Chauvin was in the wrong, right? Um, mm -hmm. The problem that we're like running into is the fact that nobody hasn't heard about this case. It was like the biggest event in our country in um, a good long while. So um, I, I don't think that it's just bias against the police officer. The way that you select jurors is like you basically can't have heard about it or have an opinion on it. Right. Right, which is impossible at this point. I mean, <laughs> right? Feels I like mean, it, pretty yeah. much impossible. Yeah, and unfortunately, you know, when they're going through jury selection, they're asking the jury pool, you know, sets of questions to judge, you know, okay, sure, people have heard about this thing. Sure, they might have some sort of bias, but they're trying to try and pick as neutral of a jury as they can. And I've been following a couple guys that are tweeting some of the highlights of the jury juror numbers. And it's just like, like Sansel was saying, it people are on both sides, and I don't know how you can pick a quote neutral jury uh when your pool is tainted like this i i think going to another municipality might help but with how much has been broadcast in the media over the past almost nine months i i don't know if they can right i don't think so either i mean uh and this is the problem and this is what i want to talk about tonight i'm interested to see if i find much debate on this but uh, the media, our, our, our supposed free press, our protectors of democracy, are completely fucking corrupt in this. Uh, we had months of riots based on their reporting of what happened. And I'll admit, I was sucked into it myself in, in, in the beginning. Uh, but essentially, they jumped the gun, just like they have done multiple times. I got sued for millions of dollars for doing that. They jumped the gun. They decided what had happened. And they essentially incited riots for months and months and months uh and, and and they had done that beforehand and we can get into that but uh I, i'm just wondering of uh we only have sanso here who would probably think otherwise but what, what's your opinion of this do you think that this is as the media and as our unite as our president says uh proof of the police hunting down black people in this country and that it's murder. It's murder by the police. Our president, Joe Biden, before he was elected, that's what he said. He went out and spoke on that. And that's what he said. Do you agree with that? Uh, I don't think that anyone is saying that police are hunting down black people. I no, don't that, think he that, said well, that. In terms of, uh, <laughs> well, I don't know if he said that. If he said that, that's I can wrong. Play Most anybody that uh, like knows anything about this or is like, a reasonable person you can find all sorts of like dumb opinions from people on twitter of course but um any like reasonable person can like look at the situation and say that there is a uh, a clear difference in the um statistics of like policing between um african-american and uh white communities in poor versus rich communities um and uh that that is one of the things that led to um the the situation with george floyd right um now I don't think that it's at all fair to say that our media is completely corrupt and that they incited riots. Um, the the riots happened before the uh, media like really like latched on to the story. They went there because of the riots. 
Um, so it feels like the 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 causation, it, like the causal link that you're trying to put there, isn't true. Well, they didn't whip up the, I, I the George it. Floyd story. I, yeah, I, I I'm gonna go ahead and let Turk go, but. Yeah. I think yeah, you're in I mean, an alternate reality here, but yeah, go ahead. In, an, in an ideal world, sure, the news media would follow things to get a story. The fact is, and it's happening with the jury right now, or the, the case now, uh, everyone is getting uh, ahead of the game now. People are preemptively doing things because they know that the masses are going to start uh, thinking certain ways, even before a particular... Uh, verdict comes out you know there's already people saying that there's going to be riots if he doesn't get every single uh conviction in the affirmative to uh you know whatever it is so it's like everyone is pushing this too far forward and the media you know you can claim they're unbiased whatever all they're doing is fanning the flame and what unfortunately is happening is also a lot of misinformation is being happened is coming out uh, i'm not calling uh, any media outlets out in particular but there's definitely skewed information, skewed uh, framing of stories, skewed, uh, skewed stories and reporting that are not uh, indicative of the reality and what could or could not have been happened better. Yeah, I mean, so uh, let, let's just establish some things here. The media right off the bat, including the president of the United States now, Joe Biden, claim that one it was a race what happened to george floyd was based on race it was you know he, they killed they murdered him based on his skin color joe biden said that and i'll play the clip here in just a second if you're not familiar with it but that's what he said I'm uh sure and, that, yeah uh, along with the rest of the media uh i rate prostate do you have actual video i'm just wondering <laughs> you're thinking it's just like so distracting it cracks me up but uh, stop it i'll boom <laughs> all right so george all right so look Look, this is the fact of the matter. The media immediately after that said that it was a race-based murder, that the police murdered him. Uh, uh, Darren, his name is, right? I forget. Darren Derek, something. Derek Chauvin. Derek yeah. Chauvin. Chauvin. Yeah, Derek Chauvin. Uh, he murdered him. And everywhere you look at the time, it's like they prejudged it from the beginning. And yet when you look at the facts, and uh, including the body cam footage, you can see there's some... And I did a video about this today, but... Uh, he was fighting police from the beginning. He had a past of violent. I mean, he had held a pregnant woman hostage, pointed a gun at her stomach. So when the police came into that situation, they already knew that. And so he was fighting. They were they they tried to be as nice to him as they possibly could from the beginning. Um, he said he couldn't breathe from the beginning. And we know this is because he was overdosed on fentanyl. He had three times the amount of fentanyl than any uh, and, other person. Hold on. Right. Yeah, this, uh, is, this is like a really common narrative that you're putting forward. But it's uh, the truth. But no, even the even the autopsy that you're putting for that you're like referencing right there. It's one of two. I know. That, yeah, well, not only is it one of two, but even the one that you're referencing that says he was overdosed, that you're saying that he said that was overdosed, they didn't say he was overdosed. They still said that he had a heart attack as a result of the restraints that were put on him, right? Nobody, nobody said that he was overdosed. This is a narrative that has been like going around right wing media, and I can't exactly explain why, other than they just like no. need to. Uh, Wait a second. Their, yeah. Wait a second, though. You're saying he had a heart attack because of the restraints, not because of the fentanyl or what? OK, well, if he had if he had fentanyl in his system, right, and he was functioning just fine before. But he wasn't functioning just wasn't. fine. Well, he was walking the around. Hold the fuck footage. up. Hold the fuck up. Please let me speak. Right? All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Beyond right. one of me. Right. Um, so, like, if he was walking around just fine before, right, and he was like, functioning just fine before and then a, neck, a knee was on his neck for nine minutes and that put him over the edge into death then it seems like it was the restraint that killed him and have he you, like yeah have you watched the full body cam footage of the apprehension and, and everything yeah that's yeah. my question he sure was like, completely, even if, yeah. he was completely erratic he kept saying all sorts of different things he uh, was dying you know, he could like he right from the beginning inside of the car when he was in the back seat i mean as a 
you know, I, I can't sit and shove his sure. feet. But like, there's, there, there's no way that you can like really like the the fact that he put his knee on his neck for nine minutes until he was dead does not like it makes it to where you can't really prove that the fentanyl was the thing that was going to kill him. You can't but really you, prove that these other things because they didn't say that there was enough in him to overdose. That's not but, what the uh, that's not what the. Uh, the um, That's what I, the yeah, the medical, said. one I of read, the medical examiners yeah, said that he had enough fentanyl in him that one, if he had died in his home and they had discovered him, that he would have, that they, he would have ruled it as an overdose death. And two, that he had enough fentanyl in him that in any normal other circumstance would have killed somebody. If he had died at home, you might've been able to say that, but he died. Well, and there was no other death. in circumstance. Well, well, yeah. Unfortunately, the problems that were that were going on with him right and even like all of this aside right um the 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 fact that um you're like we're there's like a million points that have been thrown out that i want to push back on yeah go for um, it do it take your time also, too we're just hanging out yeah there's uh there's also the thing that you said like uh it was like he was killed for his race like he like because he was a black person right? well that's what i didn't like the yeah. great narrative, like I'm part of a lot of lefty circles, right? I'm on lefty Twitter a whole bunch. Most of the time um, when I see people talking about this, right? Any like reasonable person, not like some random high school, like uh, like high schooler on Twitter. Um, the, the thing that I say is there is systemic racism that like leads that led to this situation in the first place. Right. Uh, it's not the fact that like Chauvin was like out there hunting down a black man and he just like really wanted to kill him some blacks. Right. It's it, it's not that at all. It's just like there is a, a general trend of like over policing of African-American communities because like a, of a bunch of extant factors. Right. And this led to this uh, the situation. Right. I mean, when you say due to a bunch of factors, there's a whole other discussion on that that we could veer off into. And I'm sure. cool with that. Um, well, but one thing I do want to keep wanna, in mind here yeah. is this is now a jur a uh, an actual case right in right. front of a panel of jurors. Right. And we'll be you know, you have to prove what he's convicted or what he's being charged with beyond reasonable doubt. And I could probably say that given either of those uh, medical reports, the clear instance of there being intoxicants in his body as well as other factors leading to his general health it doesn't help the fact that also that restraint move was being taught by uh many police uh well, precincts I, around yeah, the united man. states so it's like murder uh one is not going to happen murder two probably not murder murder three possibly manslaughter probably i could probably see him going down for manslaughter but it's like the facts of the case don't support the general outrage that's probably going to be happening. And then when they don't get the verdict that they want, it's going to be bedlam in the wherever this is happening. Well, yeah. right. So like the um, I, I don't know if there's like necessarily like 100 percent going to be riots and stuff um, because of the. Uh, because of the verdict right like i no mean there was happens, riots right? for uh, brianna right. taylor and they just decided right. to not charge the police officers and that's well, was that's a, because it was a much was less because... significant case in the grand scheme of things right well no I, I don't think that's like less significant right um the the problem there was that it was a grand jury and grand juries like there's a common lawyer meme where like a grand jury should be able to um get a a a, a, a charge for like a ham sandwich, right? They're there to like <laughs> look at the evidence and put someone in trial. There's only two countries in the world that do um, that use the grand jury system, and that's the U.S. and South Africa. Everyone else realizes that this is a stupid fucking system. Um, but it, like even outside of that, um, you said something about like this is something that he was trained to do. This like knee on the neck thing, right? Um, even if that's right. the case, right? Um, like even if that's the case. Uh, Can I say something about uh, that real quick? I don't mean to sure, butt in yeah. on you, but I just want to say about yeah. the knee on the neck thing because that'll, I mean, that's what this is all about. Uh, it has killed, or I'm sorry, I looked into that to find out how many people that has actually killed. I could not find any stat on that per, in per se, but I did find an NBC story that said that 40, I think 44 people had been rendered unconscious in five years. And it is a, it is a tactic that's used daily.
Yeah. And that's not like necessarily a good thing, right? Because if it leads to like people like losing consciousness because there's a, ne a knee on their neck, like a lot of pressure applied to their neck, that can, that can also lead right, to but... people dying, right? Uh, I, like, like, here's the thing. Like, even if it's like a tactic that's taught to them, right? There's a lot of different like, like martial arts and shit that police officers or military personnel learn that uh, if they use it to the ex like too far of an extent, right? Like if say they learn like Krav Maga and then they use that and they like fucking just like break a dude's neck, right? Even though they were trained in that like style of martial arts, it doesn't really give them a pass for killing someone with it, right? So like, I don't understand why we're even bringing that up as like, oh, well, he was trained to do it. Yeah, he was trained well, to- Well, that, that goes to the defense of the case people. and that right. he was following common protocols and yes, right. he could have not done the training properly, which is why I think manslaughter three or whatever the higher charge of manslaughter he's being charged with could happen because, you know, if the training says to let go of someone after they haven't been, you know, acknowledged in 60 seconds and he I doesn't agree. do that, he is then negligent and suffers the consequence. I think you nailed so, it. Uh, real quick, I want to say, I think the Turk pretty much just predicted what will the worst outcome for him will be. I think that will be the worst outcome. I don't think that's going to happen because, <laughs> like I just said, it's a daily tactic that's used every day across this country and millions of interactions, literally millions of interactions every year, and it results in, you know, very few, if any, deaths. And some people unconscious and let's remember that they only use this tactic as a, you know almost a last result last resort it only happens when people are fighting them and are just going crazy i mean yeah, I, I just don't see how you can blame the people trying to resolve the situation that is not of their making i don't get it well right, so it I, seems like it was kind of of their making because the the crime that george floyd was even being accused of wasn't like uh like a major criminal act right george, um, george floyd had every opportunity to comply <laughs> he was put into several different situations that would not have resulted in him getting a knee on his neck right you know well, they... i have a question for you then do you think that like in every situation like no matter what even if a cop is like absolutely like unreasonable in their um in the way that they're treating you Right. Do you think that the, it's something that like a citizen should comply with the police no matter what, even if they're in the wrong? Yes. And let the lawyers sort, sort it out later. Yes. OK. Absolutely. So, like, so number one, I don't think that any Republican would ever say that. Yeah, no, like we should absolutely bend the knee to the to the government at every single like no matter what, because we'll let lawyers sort it out later. Right. Number two, if you want to say that lawyers need to sort it out later, that's like that's like pretty fine for you if you can afford a lawyer, but it doesn't seem like many people in these like, uh, like it, inner it city black neighborhoods have, can afford lawyers. It doesn't even have to get that far. If he would just have listened to the police officers and just kept yelling at him instead of trying to walk off or start to interact physically with the officers, the entire situation could have been, uh, no, he, they right. probably would have charged him with the, uh, what the, the fraud check that he was trying to cash right and it, he would be around you know, right and let me just say this real quick to not go crazy uh, yeah but right, let you, me okay, and liberal, say a cop walks up to, oh. really quick say a cop walks up to you and and starts accusing you of something that you obviously didn't do right and says like you're under arrest for the crime of uh let, let's say like um like i saw you um i'm trying to think of something that's not like uh a murder like jaywalking charge, right like not even jaywalking, something like slightly better, like worse than that. I saw you do some graffiti back there, right? I saw you like um, spray paint uh, a gang sign on someone's fence, right? You're coming with me, right? Do you do you think that you like are like obligated to go with that cop, even though you like definitely don't think that you did that? You 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 have def you have multiple options all of which don't have to result in violence that's, that's, or dis, uh, okay, dis yeah, but going like, against what the officer says. So that's, so the cop, right. the cop like accuses you of that, right? What are your options? You can either say like, no, fuck you, right? And just like try and walk and away from the situation. Fuck your life, who is, right. es who is escalating at that point, right? Is it the cop, right? No. Or is it the person Look. that's trying to get out of the situation that like they're they feel that they are being... <laughs> unlawfully detained. no no yes. let me jump yes. in here let me jump in here real quick yeah, sure. sonasol you're i gotta tell you man i know you think you like you I, I understand you have empathy for people and you're a good person i get it you are and you have you you want 
good to happen to these people. But what you're te- what you're saying right now is the worst advice. Like you know, people I'm, I'm like asking, you, I'm asking this no, on like a listen. fundamental level. I understand no. like the real world versus like uh like the examples what I'm giving right now, right? I'm asking what ought to happen, right? Right. I'm I'm telling you, like, uh, and this is my problem. This is another another big problem I have with the media yes. is that when these things happen, instead of putting out message to, messages to the black community that, or to all communities, it doesn't matter any community, that when you're being arrested. Uh, go along. You got to comply because that's the law. You comply. And then if you were mistreated, sue them afterwards. That should be the message. They should be like pushing. Like if you're, get, if, if you're getting screwed because over, unreasonable. no, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Can, can you, can you listen to me just for a second. Let me, quick? I'll finish in just a second. Uh, they need to be, uh, told about the law and how they can sue and empower themselves if they're being mistreated. There are YouTube channels all over the place that do first and second amendment audits. They do all these kind of, uh, uh, they instruct people how about their rights and all this stuff. That's what people need to be, uh, told. Not that like there's some rationalization or justification to fight the police. That's it. Well, can I say on. something? No, but there's like no way can that you believe me, this. Me, I, I, this is like a bunch of conservatives, right? Like, there's no way that you believe well, that like me, the state should be able to just like arrest you with impunity, and then you have to like sit there and pay for like lawyers and stuff. Especially like, imagine like telling a, like a bunch of like poor people in like Appalachia, so like, oh, just like pay for a lawyer afterwards. Like, they're so poor. They so let's poor. promote funding lawyers for people who get screwed over. Let's promote that. Like, we, we already I, do. Look, That's called public. Defense. Well, let me tell you on CNN. On CNN, what's her? I can't freaking remember her name all of a sudden, but she actually said, oh, when she was actually promoting that black people fight the police on CNN, and she said, oh, well, when when black people just comply, they die. That's what she said. So. That's not the way to go. I'm that telling you right now. Happened, I may be a straight white male, but I'm telling you, black folks very, very in America, black Americans, okay. Okay, that's I, not the way to go. I, I want to get. I want to get. A, I want to get a couple words in on this. Um, first of all, the idea that uh, putting your your knee on a um, assailant's neck is a it should be a legitimate uh, way of detaining somebody is absolutely ridiculous. I know this because Liberal I was club. trained as a. Uh, I was trained as a DOC officer. Nobody said that. You Liberal were club. We case. already established Wait, that we already established that fifty uh, forty four people in five years lost consciousness. That's the extent of yeah. So so that. it sounds to me like y'all are trying to defend the practice, right? Yeah, no. I think it's okay. I think it's a last resort. It's one of the last resorts before deadly force. Yeah. Okay, so I was trained as a DOC officer in the state of Virginia, and that means that I was um, training for an officer in a prison, which means that everybody that I was dealing with were um, already convicted criminals and we were trained to never put our knees on the next when we were trying to detain these people so i do not see why it would be understandable well, for a, a police just officer trying to avoid to lawsuits there but... so. i mean multiple states have different uh requirements and laws to adhere to i believe right uh, here and they Texas, may train that's against so it's right like... and i think they may train I, I think they may train that tactic only to and i'm not putting you down liberal cluck but it may be like certain levels that they train that to because if you train it to like lower levels i'm just guessing that the it may be level. more open to lawsuits or something i don't no, know so highest, highest also- level so Chauvin's probably also been a police officer for many years i don't know what his stats are as a police officer years so it's entirely possible that he was trained early on in the career when it was an acceptable practice, and then they've started phasing out that te- technique for other safer, more humane techniques, and that it was still in the books as being an acceptable uh, use of force, but it's being phased out. So, you know, yeah. that's a what if scenario, but it's like right. I'm not condoning people putting knees on necks of people. What I'm saying is. It is in their book on things to do, and they did plenty of other things before that point. So it's like it's so, not like he just like laundry. instantly shoved him to the ground okay, yeah, and yeah. put his hands oh, on, on that point. point is again, he not, it doesn't matter. Is he not a, let's let Steve oh, yeah, get in there. Really, I, okay, yeah, go for it. Is he not a free thinker that could realize after a certain amount of minutes that <clears throat> let's just grab the other you know somewhat chunky Asian cop and let's just jump on this guy's back pick him up and get him in the fucking car here instead of they like, already had put him in the car before this is in they had yeah right, so, and, uh, by uh, the way when he was in the car uh, handcuffed he was screaming that he was gonna die because he couldn't breathe I'm just saying he was so before there was the any point- necks before there was any knees on his neck 
So on the point of um, it, it was a part of their uh, books and stuff like that, uh, that it was uh, liable in that state. Um, I agree that um, the that when you have something like that, when you're trained like that and you're told that it's OK um, and you use those tactics and end up causing harm, it should not be on the officer because that's the way you're trained. Um, it, but like the, the onus is on the state to change the policies to make sure these things don't happen. Um, the state is 100 percent responsible if these were on uh, these tactics were on their books. Um, now, however. Um, George Floyd was pretty obviously having a mental health crisis, um, and and the, the whole defund the police movement was was all about like not having police officers be the the people that are dealing with these kinds of crises because they're not very well equipped to do so. Well, let me ask you this: Let's say that George Floyd, a man who took a pregnant woman who invaded a home, took a pregnant woman hostage and held a, held a gun to her abdomen, would a uh, sending us a, a um, some sort of uh, medical person in to deal with him? You think that that would be a good idea? Well, if they, yes, it can be. Okay. Hold on. This we'll is, sacrifice this is them, weird. I guess. I, I feel very, very weird about you, like knowing all about. Uh, George Floyd's past crimes, but like not un like knowing Derek Chauvin's past of like being fair a enough, cop. fair enough. Like, what what has know, he done? Yeah, so like in Chauvin's 19 year uh career, he had 18 citations for like uh or like complaints or citations, um, six of which went towards um like disciplinary action for being too goddamn rough with people. Right. All right. He has a history against... of being too fucking rough with people for being too like for doing like police brutality and shit. He yeah. has a history of that. So why are you focusing so much on George I, Floyd's I path? That. Right. So yeah. uh, instead of George or uh, Derek Chauvin's. Well, uh, I can explain that. Being like a total shithead. I can explain that. I actually did read oh, about sure. that, about Derek Chauvin. Um, uh, I, I, I would say. That should come into it, I suppose, because he maybe maybe he did something with his knee, knowing that he would cause him, you know, some sort of. I don't pain think that, that it's about knowing, though. I don't think it's about knowing. It's about well, not caring. Here's I the think thing. I can make it here's the thing. I think none of this would ahead. have happened, all right, without you know uh, Floyd himself. And if you just watch the body cam videos, which the media never popularized, they never made those big. Watch him. He the man is out of his mind, and I'm sorry. Anybody, in my opinion, if somebody has invaded a home, taken somebody hostage, pointed a gun at their abdomen, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck what they do after. I mean, well, I, I take that back. They, they there is a possible uh, redemption there, maybe, but he didn't do it, so fuck him. I don't even care. It's just like Wait, he went to jail for that. Is that not enough redemption? Like, no, is, it's not. Should we? No. Okay, so like, what is the point of prison then? Is it just to punish people and like we just like vilify them for the rest of time after that? I, I'm confused because like if we're going to have a justice system that has I just a, has I cannot like, fathom somebody who would do something like that. I would never do that, and I cannot fathom. Okay, and Another. I'm not like fucking. But we're getting way off the beaten path no, here. No. But this is like really, uh, this is like this is a like common tactic that I see people like uh, defending police for when they do like really horrible things. I'm not sitting here and saying. Like, but I'm against police, police doing right? horrible things. No, hold on, like, hold on, hold on. But he did something oh, that was horrible. This is like pretty much a very, very like when it first came out, even like a couple of months afterwards, it was pretty well like uh, accepted. Like J Derek we're gonna Trump get into that. Horrible. That's a media problem. Months. It took, well, yeah, it did. It was media. Like it took yeah. months and months of media fighting against the uh, like pushing a narrative that actually uh, George Floyd was at fault for. Uh, for this no. and actually police are being vilified yes because even at the like maybe at Fox. the point when there was um when there was riots even when the target burned down there was something like an 80 percent uh approval rate of blm people were like yeah fuck Derek chauvin look at him he has his neck on that guy's or his knee on that guy's neck right for fucking nine minutes right yes even me i was a, i was on board yeah. And so like, this idea, this idea that it was like people just like are trying to vilify cops. No, it took way longer for the for the media, the right wing media to try and um, uh, turn the narrative around than it did for people to accept. Like, yeah, no, this was obviously a bad thing. We shouldn't have our knees on people's necks. No, for nine no, 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 no. I'm sorry, dude. All around them, 
with people all around him begging and pleading like look he's like in a fucking like horrible position like you've you've got to do something right um i don't like this idea of like this authoritarian idea of like we should just automatically accept everything that cops do is good and like Me or neither. that we should accept a cop um arresting someone um at like face value every single well, time right let me tell because you Sansol. all right yeah. let, me, let me just stop you there that's not what this is for sure because i i i uh one of my favorite channels out there is cop block are you familiar with that you must be i know about cop it block. yeah cop block okay i i am not I, i'm a guy let me tell you right now you may not know this but i actually got uh wrongly accused of a crime when i was young and it pretty much ruined my life there for a while until i got into the military but uh, yeah, I was wrongly accused, and it got through the courts and everything. And eventually, at the end, the truth finally came out, and I escaped <laughs> with my life somehow. But believe me, I know. Like, I'm not like I understand that cops out there are. There's brutal cops. There's racist cops, and all that. I'm just we're talking about this one thing, and this yeah. particular case. And, and uh, the problem we were talking about this earlier that we can't even try this case. Like, how can this guy get a fair case in court? Because the media has already judged. The president, Joe Biden, has already judged. He put out a statement saying that, oh, this was based on race. Black, this shows black people are being hunted. I mean, hold on. But you're, you're, you're like, this is a non sequitur. Just because. No, it's not. But that, that, it's no, another. No, no, I'm on. trying to it jump is. topics here just, a little bit. But yeah. Just because, just because they can't find a, a jury doesn't mean that it mean that it's automatically everyone is against uh, Derek Chauvin. It's anyone that has heard of this case or right. has any opinion right. on BLM, right? right? Even if I, it's positive towards Chauvin, right? This isn't right. That, like, I agree. Just because they can't find a, a a jury for them for him doesn't mean that it's like rigged against police. Like this is no, no, like, no. I didn't say rigged. I didn't say rigged. You're right. I didn't. I didn't get into that more clearly. But I agree. There, it's both. It's so like everybody is in their spots at this point. But the fact of the matter is, when you look at the facts, when you, I mean, and, and I, that's even hard because when you look at the uh, autopsy, there was two autopsies, but the other autopsy was done by somebody that was paid by the family. So I don't know. Uh, here's my thing. Okay. This is what I want to talk about here right now. The media. And that's what my channel is typically focused on. Um, right now. I mean, I even just, right now, I today just... I did a video. Jen Psaki went on there with another reporter and they're talking about, oh, well, we're doing all this outreach to black communities and blah, 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 and all this and that. Like we don't have, there's no evidence that any of this had anything to do with race. Correct. Like this, like specific incident, or like the yeah, the concept this of like specific incident. Um, no, but I don't think that that necessarily matters because the problem that people are having is that there seems to be a pattern of um of police doing things in uh like while they're uh in African American neighborhoods or like inner city like poor neighborhoods and they get away with them almost like all of the time because well, of a million different things, right? All right, well. All right. Well, I, I, we've been you and I have been talking a while. Let's bring in some other people. I want to bring in um, real quick. Liberal clock. Go ahead and say your piece. You haven't said much. And then Turk. OK, so um, I, I want to speak to what I said earlier about the mental health professional. When George Ford died, he was handcuffed on the ground. Um, he was posing no threat to anyone. As soon as uh, the police realized that he was, quote unquote, as you said, out of his mind, they probably should have tried to bring if they had the means bring a mental health professional in to try and help George Floyd through his mental health crisis. That would have been the ideal way of handling that situation instead of trying to make um, detaining him and getting him inside the car like number one priority. Uh, De-escalating George Floyd should have been the number one priority, whether that is training the cops to do so or having a mental health professional come in and do so. That should have been a number one priority. That is what I was trained Who's to do as a that? – that was what I was going to do uh, – trained to do as a DOC officer also. Um, Second, if you want to talk about whether racism has something to do with it, um, you got to recognize the differences between a systemic racist, a racist system and individual actors who are explicitly racist and individual actors who has implicit biases. Ghost and I'm happy Busters. to get into that stuff, but um, but it, it, it's a really multifaceted issue that's going to probably take more time than what we got right now to get into and probably shouldn't be discussed on a round table because I don't think that anybody can do their side justice. Well, we're all white males here formats. too, so that's pretty sad sacrosanct yeah i mean i uh, uh, yeah uh. <laughs> what do you think, think, yeah, think Turk? That, that dr michael Baden is a part 
is a member of, of the media as well. And he's also a professional um, uh, witness. Uh, and so his findings can be questionable because I believe he went in with, with a, um, an agenda to, to, to You're talking about um, the family guy. Yeah. The family. The, autopsy. The, the, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. He is a, pro, he's a professional. Well, he had a show on HBO. Um, did he? Uh, I did not know that. Yeah. He, he, was, he was a coroner in New York for years, but, but, but my point is, is that this dude is a professional witness and okay. his job Here's is, my to, thing. Is, to, is to disrupt the, the, the oppositions or the, you know, um, the state's uh, presentation of, of how the cause of death, right? I, through their, through their corner, et cetera. I right. wouldn't paint him that broad of a brush. I would say that he is a professional who has been on a witness stand and has put his findings into the court ledger because as a coroner for however many years, that is your job to, did, to find did, the... Yeah, but he did also, he did uh, OJ along with uh, with Lee... You know, um, and, and uh, you know, and Sarah whacked all those guys are, are professional. I mean, really? they're very, very expensive. Yes, I'm, actually, I'm, I'm pretty interested to see since one uh, autopsy revealed that it was murder and the other autopsy revealed that there was no evidence of uh, asphyxiation. I'm interested to see how that bears out. What's well, because really I would like, assume that the guy who says there's no evidence of, of asphyxi asphyxiation has can prove that. And so I'm I mean, I'm. It, that's going to be interesting. Really quick, just to that point, um, they they both came to the conclusion that the restraints were the um, were the thing that uh, ended up killing George Floyd. The difference between the two autopsies was that one said that um, it was uh, pulmonary things that like ended up killing him, right? the like perhaps like the the restraints um like either either like overly excited him or like something to that effect or um and then the other one said something to the effect of, or said that it was asphyxiation either way nobody like that is was involved with the autopsies or was involved with the investigation afterwards denies that it was the restraints that killed him the like anyone that says otherwise is um, the restraints the narrative. not the fentanyl Literally, yes. I read I read the autopsy right before I came on here because you said you right. wanted to talk about George Floyd. And no, I, I read him too, but stuff. the other guy said that he had three times the amount that would kill any – like any in any normal circumstance would kill a person. Uh, the, the report that I said said that there was fentanyl, but in the end, the, the restraint was the thing that ended up killing him. That's it's interesting. It's kind of the same way, like, There's if, fentanyl, I, uh, like if I no... stabbed someone, like, 15 times, right, and then they died of blood loss, I couldn't say, well, look, it was the blood loss that killed them. It was the it was the stabbing, well, right? Well, I, I find it interesting that one, cor one coroner uh, describes the amount of fentanyl he had, and the other one kind of glosses over it. But but also to nitpick on your example, Wait, you Sansol, lost, someone could you... also have taken a lot of ac uh, acetaminophen and caused their your their blood vessels to dilate more and causing more blood to flow. And you know if you got you know scratched on the elbow and that caused them to die. So it's like I think well, hold it's on. up for it's the a, jury to dissect the elbow. <laughs> it, yeah, it's but, yeah, an I guess example. That's like what the debate is actually. Yeah, right? and like, that's what I think like it's the... up to the jury to figure out which of these two medical reports has more credibility, which one is but more then, accurate with the rest of the right. evidence. You're right, right? You're right. But at the end of the day, when you're when the evidence submitted to the court is that it are these autopsies that both link that it was the restraint that ended up putting them over the edge. Right. You can't yeah. argue in court or like I, I think it's a really weak defense to say, like, he will he, he would have died anyways. So like Derek Chauvin putting his knee on his neck doesn't really fucking matter. It's a really weak defense in court. I mean, right? it's like and a it's long really string of events that led too. to that, though, but that you're just kind of like blowing off. But you're also in the court of law where there's other uh, pieces of evidence. The autopsy report sure. might be one piece of the totem pole, but there's also the entire history of the entire arrest that could have. Uh, led to what was going on and why they exactly. used certain restraints. So it's like, that's why I don't think the charges of murder two, murder three are going to stick. And I think that's what's well, ultimately going to be the disappointment. So, right, somebody asked you, me you earlier, know, like, why I brought up the yeah. fact that he had held that woman hostage. Like, that's part of it. Like, when those those cops knew that. So, like, when they were, you know, arresting Hold on, him. Once he, know that, they once know that he went to prison. They don't. They didn't know the exact charge. They but might also, have seen, like, assault. Or something also, like regardless, that. regardless, he was in restraints. Right. Wait, wait. So cops are more. Cops are definitely more uh, 
a little more sketchy when they're dealing with somebody that yeah, they know you're bringing, you're bringing has been in violent like altercations. Case by like bringing up like the like you're making your case through like emotion, like oh look how like horrible this person was instead of like no relaying no He's no just you're miss you're miss yeah that's wait, wait, not what that's, it is. That's also that's also irrelevant because he was in restraints. And while I've got the floor, I just want to make two points, um, real quick. Uh, whether or not George Floyd died of um, restraints only speaks to that particular case. Um, it doesn't actually. Speak Speak to the systematic problems um, that uh, that encompasses uh, policing that. within the black community. Sure. Um, the second point is is that fentanyl um, kills people. Uh, no you said you said that it was um, a a cardiovascular uh, problem, right? I don't know if it was whether it's yeah. yeah. Well, so was it like fast heart rate or slow heart rate that killed him? Because fentanyl kills by slowing your heart rate. I, I would have to I, look back at the. So, no, no, it's he was going it, through excited delirium at the time, which I don't believe is related to the cardio uh, rate. I'm not it, a medical expert, so. But. Opioids suppress your breathing. Um, it, literally, if you take too much, it turns your the part of your brain off that tells you to breathe. Okay, uh, okay. but yeah, if y'all want to talk about systemic issues uh, when it comes to um, well. I mean, I, I, I kind of want to talk about the media and how the media has been like we're, we're getting off of the fact that uh, can, and, can we just get one one quick thing here? Out yeah, of the yeah, way? Good. good. Can we do a quick vote um, yeah. on what everyone would say for uh, Shelvin of uh, guilty? And then I want you to say single digits in, of years in jail, double digits of years in jail or life. I mean, what's your thought? I'm going to say guilty double digits. Guilty of That's, what? Is this a cop that we're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Guilty I, of I don't, something I, I don't that would know. equate to 10 to 20. Are you serious? Not guilty. Period. Not guilty. I would say, yeah, um, I would say legally uh, not guilty if the state allows the actions that he did. Uh, that, that would be the uh, there would be onus on the state to address that. Um, morally, yeah. probably pretty culpable because I would um, expect somebody with police training to know better. <laughs> Um, like I don't know if we're like saying like I don't know like what the point of this is. I don't know if we're saying like what we personally think or what we think is going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Personally, Personal yeah, I, I I think that he's guilty, and I don't know um like how many years he's gonna get that just depends on you think he actually like knowingly murdered him or you don't need to black? knowingly murder someone to go to jail do you think yeah. he normal? do you think he knowingly murdered him because he was black no okay that's not what he's being charged with though okay i'm just curious just me personally because yeah that's like the narrative that our our president of the united states is Mainstream. I don't think that anyone is actually like running with that narrative that like is a reasonable person. No, and I don't think what that's you... what our, Joe Biden. No, is come saying. on. The president said it, and, and it is the narrative, the popular narrative, that black people are being hunted down by the police.